Number 20. Identify the atoms that are oxidized and reduced, the change in oxidation state for each of them, and then find the oxidizing agent as and the reducing agent, right, in each of the following equations. And then we have letter E out of the bunch. Okay, so we've done a couple of problems just like this, right? It's all in the playlist if you guys are on the playlist. If not, at the end of the video, there's a button for the playlist, okay? So just check that out if you want more practice. Um, okay, so we're asking for, you know, they're asking for atoms that are oxidized or reduced. Atoms, we're looking for basically elements, okay? And if they're asking for something being oxidized and reduced, that means that this reaction is a redox reaction, which means that there's going to be a change in your oxidation states from reactant to product. So somewhere along the way, maybe potassium might change its charge or sulfur or oxygen or iodine. I have four examples here or four different atoms. I need to figure out which one of them was oxidized and which one is reduced. So in order to do that, the best way is to just go from left to right and just find out each individual atom's charge on the reactant side and each individual atom's charge on the product side. It may look like a little bit tedious for right now, but I promise you, if you just do that, you'll get all the answers correctly. Okay. So. Let's work from left to right. The first one is I have K2S2O3. I don't care about how many I have, and I don't care about the state. I just want to find out the charges of each individual atom in here. Now, this one is a compound that has three elements, right? K, S, and O. When this usually happens, we generally will know the oxidation states of the outer ones, in this case, potassium and oxygen, but we won't know the oxidation state for the middle one. That's why we have to use algebra to solve. So let's use our trend to figure out what the oxidation state for the ones on the outside, and then we could use math to find the one in the middle. K is in group one, right? K generally wants to have a plus one charge. So I'm just going to write that down, plus one. Oxygen is all over here, and oxygen wants to be a negative two charge. Sulfur, since it's in the middle, chances are I don't know it. Don't do the trend for the middle ones, okay? We'll see that it's not going to be a negative two. Now let's just set up the math. Remember that whatever I do, this always has to equal the total charge that was said in the upper right-hand corner. But was there a charge in the upper right-hand corner? No, it was, it was neutral. So what is the number that's not positive nor negative? It's zero. So I know that the whole thing has to equal the total charge, which is zero. And now all you have to do is just multiply everything you know about potassium, everything you know about sulfur, and everything you know about oxygen. And what I mean by everything you know is always multiply the oxidation state by how many you have. And you're going to do that for each one of them. So for potassium, plus one times two is two. So I'm going to write a two down there. Combining with sulfur, x times two. So this is plus 2x, and then oxygen, negative 2 times 3 is a minus 6. So there's my formula. 2 plus 2x minus 6 equals 0. Solve for x, and that's the oxidation state for sulfur. So let's see, I can clean this up. 2 minus 6 is a negative 4. So I have something like this. 2x minus 4 equals 0. Bring the 4 over. Right, and if you do that, it becomes just a four. I'm just kind of erasing because I'm kind of running out of room here. But if you divide by two and you divide by two, x would equal a plus two. You see how it's not a negative two? So now we know that the sulfur charge is a plus two. So I'm gonna write down all the charges that I know. Potassium was a plus one, 
Sulfur was a plus 2, and oxygen was a minus 2. Now let's move on to the next one. I2. I could write that over here. I2, it's just iodine. There's two of them. This is one of your diatomics. And remember, just like before, right, the diatomics, there, there was no charge in the upper right-hand corner, right? So this was also neutral. Diatomics always have a zero charge for their atoms. So the iodine would be a zero charge. Now let's go to the next one. Now this is very similar to the one of before, so we're probably going to do the same thing. K... 2S4O6. Use your trends on the outer elements. So potassium was a plus 1 and oxygen was a minus 2 to solve for the sulfur. I don't know what that is. That's an X. Remember that the whole thing has to equal the total charge, but there was no total charge in the upper right hand corner, so that had to have been equal to. Actually, let me put it down here. This had to be equal to zero, right? And then just multiply the numbers that you know for each element. Plus one times two is a two. X times four is plus four X. And then negative two times six is negative 12. So you have 2 plus 4x minus 12 equals 0. And now let's just clean it up, right? 2 minus 12 is a negative 10. So I got negative 10 here. I have, okay, 2, yeah. So I have, I could bring over the 10, right? So this would be a plus 10. And then I have, let's see, divide by 4. So this would be x equals 10 over 4, a.k.a. if I simplify this, it would be 5 over 2. That's fine. Sometimes you will have fractions. So this would be 5 over 2. Okay, and that's a positive. I like to keep the positives. Now, this just means if you don't get a whole number, this just means that different charges are actually in the sulfur, right? There's four total sulfurs. Some of them are going to have one charge. Some of them are going to have another charge. But the average out of all of them is a 5 over 2 charge or a 2.5. So let's just put those charges in the, in the upper part of this compound, right? So the K was a plus 1. The sulfur average was a plus 5 over 2, aka plus 2.5, and the oxygen was a negative 2. And now we just have to do Ki. So I have some room over here. We could do it maybe, I could do it over here, Ki. In this case, use those subscripts to crisscross back up, right? There was one potassium and one iodine. This one told me that the iodine was a negative one. Remember, the negatives are in the back. That's standard practice, right? And then the one crisscrosses back up to tell me that the potassium was a plus one. So in this case, I have K plus one and I being a minus one. But that kind of checks out. K plus one. And then if I just look at the iodine over here, that's a negative one. So we're good. So plus one and negative one. Now all we have to do is just notice the changes. So let's see. Potassium was a plus one on the reactant side. It went to a plus one and it went to a plus one. Was there any change? No, all the numbers are the same, right? Plus one, plus one, plus one. So that's out. You only care about the ones that actually changed. Sulfur went from being a plus two, two went to being a plus five and a half or a 2.5. That is a change. So that I'm going to write down. So sulfur went from a plus two charge 
2, a plus 5 over 2. Now, just to make it easy, 5 over 2 is the same thing as 2.5. Okay, and then let's see, oxygen went from a negative 2 to a negative 2, so no change there, no one cares, and then iodine went from a 0 to a negative 1. So that's a change. I'm going to write that down. Iodine went from a 0 to a negative 1. Okay, so now which one was oxidized, which one was reduced? It comes down to the mnemonic Leo, L-E-O, the lion says ger, G-E-R. Leo, the lion says ger. L-E-O, loss of electrons is oxidation. Ger, gain of electrons is reduction. So if you are losing electrons, and remember electrons are negative, so if you're losing negative charges, you will look like you're becoming more positive. You're losing negatives, so you're kind of gaining positives. Gaining electrons, electrons are negative. If you gain them, you become more negative. So let's see. The sulfur went from a plus 2 to a plus 2.5. On a number line, so think of it as a number line, am I getting more positive or am I getting more negative? Yeah, I'm getting more positive by a little bit, but still I'm getting more positive. So if I'm gaining positives, quote unquote, right, I'm really losing negatives. I'm losing electrons. So this has to be oxidation, and this one has to be oxidized. So if you know which one is being oxidized, the other one has to be reduced. You can't have two oxidized guys and two reduced guys. But let's just see if it makes sense. It's like kind of like a check. Iodine went from a zero to a negative one. Am I becoming more positive or am I becoming more negative? Oh yeah, I'm definitely becoming more negative. So I gained electrons. I was reduced or this, you know, iodine was reduced. So I'll say more negative. So it's reduced. So we answered the first part. Which atom was oxidized? Which one was reduced? The sulfur was oxidized. The iodine was reduced. Now we need to find the change in the oxidation state for each. That's this whole concept here. So sulfur changed from a plus 2 to a plus 2.5. So overall, losing maybe a half of an electron average. And then iodine went from a 0 to a negative 1. It gained one electron. It became more reduced or more positive. So this change is what they're asking for here. And now they just want to know the oxidizing and reducing agents. Okay. So whenever they're asking for the agents, right, oxidizing agent and reducing agent, the agents are always the reactants. So right off the bat, it can't be this and it can't be this. Those are your products. So it can only be this and this. One of them is the oxidizing agent. The other one is the reducing agent. The one whose atom is undergoing oxidation really is the reducing agent. They're flipped. So if you see the word agent, and they won't ask for anything else. It is literally the agent. If you see a reducing agent, that means that it's undergoing oxidation. And if you see a oxidizing agent, you're undergoing reduction. And I don't know why this says oxidizing, but I'm going to say oxidizing. Okay. So let's see. It's the sulfur and the iodine. The sulfur was from this guy, right? This one was the one that changed. So if this one was being oxidized, the atom, that means the whole compound is the agent. And in this case, the whole compound is the reducing agent. Vice versa, if the iodine was the one that was being reduced, that means that its whole compound, and in this case, it's just I2, that's the oxidizing agent. So just to reiterate, maybe I could just put it over here, the K2, S2, O3, that's your reducing agent, and I'll just put red agent, reducing agent, and then I2, 
was your oxidizing agent. Make sure that you include the whole compound, okay? When they say agent, you have to include the whole compound or the molecule. You can't just say the atom. All right? And that's it. A lot of stuff here, but we did it. But it all stemmed from just knowing those charges in the, in the upper top, and then you can figure it all out, all right? So, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments what you thought, and if it helped you out, hit the subscribe button. We have physics problems. We got math problems. So hopefully we can help you out in other areas. I will see you guys in the next lesson. Bye-bye.